This was such a cute story. You know, we don't get to see true brotherhood stories. You know, the boys are mixed into to the story, but a true brother brother relationship. What yeah. drew both of you initially to this story? Well, it was yeah. a personal story for me uh, growing up uh, with my brother. Uh, we lost our father young, just like the boys in the movie. And, um, you know, uh, we had a, a great relationship. And, um, and uh, I, I really just wanted to explore that. Uh, I think part of the fun of it is, is as, as the movie has gone on and, and we've worked with other members on the crew, they have siblings. They have uh, brothers and sisters uh, that they started to tell us about and we started to pull from. So it became a bigger story. Totally. What I thought was so cool about it is what their characters were so unique in themselves. It wasn't a cool guy jock and the kind right. of right. not so cool brother, but they both were quirky and interesting, <laughs> yeah. which most of us yeah. are, are truly like. Yeah. What were some of your favorite elements of the of the storytelling? I think that, I mean, you totally hit it. I love that, that they're both kind of awkward in their own way, Ian and Barley. Um, but the rest of the cast, I think it just it just rounds out the world, um, and I, I just, I love all of the characters. I love um, the Manticore, and uh, I just, um, I love some of the, the, the fantasy tropes that we pulled in character-wise, mm -hmm. but then kind of turned them on their head a little bit and, and made them fit into to this particular world. But I just love how big the world is and, and, and the wide array of characters from unicorns eating trash to centaurs, <laughs> cop centaurs. I just, uh, I love, I love the, the bigness of it all. That's what, I'm glad you said that. That's something I like too, that mm. how diverse this world itself mm. being devoid of humans, but it still had lots of different people, lots of different colors, lots yeah. of different relatable characters. If you could liken this city where they all live, what, what city would you liken it to? Some people might say New York or Los Angeles or what would be yeah. a, a, a close thing? Los Angeles yeah, was it's... an interesting, yeah. Los Angeles we talked a little bit about yeah. um, just because it is such a, a it's it's modern yeah. and um, and yet there's amazing suburbs all over and we wanted kind of that feel that mix of that feel um, and a we variety of diversity yeah variety and of diversity and it just felt like the most modern place so it was the it was the best for the the twist of the world yeah mm -hmm. exactly uh, and finally what I found just beautiful was the just how vibrant the animation was and all those different touches that bring the story to life in the credits there was something like a cloud velocity supervisor or something like that. What does that person, what, why is that so critical? Because that was a very prominent title in, in the credits. What does that person do? Yeah, he got, Matt, Matt Webb, he got a card. Um, it's it, literally every time you see clouds in the film, he's responsible for how they move, shape, um, how they integrate into the set and the sky. And it's a whole job to make that look great. Mm -hmm. And you know, in the second half of the movie, when we kind of go into more of the fantasy world, you really see a lot of sky, a lot of, and the and so he did all that work, and uh, it makes it feel believable. It yeah. makes it feel kind of like we're in a fantasy world. So yeah, yeah. that was super cool. <laughs> Thank you so much. I really liked it. Great question.